Before I begin my remarks, I would like to mark the passing of one of New Jersey's all-time greats, Governor Brendan Byrne. Brendan, Governor Byrne set the standard for integrity, for public service, and for bold thinking. We are a better place because of his service. Thank you, Governor Byrne. I'd like to thank uh, everyone who came out today. I, I saw my, my friends, Speaker Roberts and uh, Speaker Collins. Thank you both gentlemen for coming out. They were kind enough to have lunch with me the other day and give me some pointers. I appreciate that. My, my good friend, Senator, uh, Governor McGreevy, thank you very much for being here, Jim. Um, to everyone who made this, this program uh, special, uh, and it was uh, a very personal and special uh, thing for me, uh, to the uh, South Amboy pipe and drum folks, thank you for being here. To the, to the Woodbridge High School choir and band, you guys are the best, thank you so much. To Arlette, and wasn't that some version of the national anthem, holy smokes. And if you thought it was, sounded familiar, it's because Arlette sings it for Devil's Games, so there you go. Uh, to Imam Hussein, thank you very much. Uh, to Justice uh, Albin, uh, whom I have known for years, uh, thank you very much, Justice, for coming and doing me the honor of swearing me in today. Um, to uh, Kevin Rina, uh, who did the invocation. Kevin has been my best friend since our first year in college and I'm so proud that he could be here with me today. Thank you, Kevin. And to Eric Legrand, um, who is the most inspirational person I think I've ever met. You know, I had the, one of the things I, I've gotten to do uh, is call, do the play-by-play -play for the local access channels in Woodbridge. I'm a frustrated sportscaster. Um, some say I'm better at that than being an assemblyman. I don't know. And, and those are my friends. Um, but Eric, uh, and I got to call his games when he was in high school, and he was the proverbial man playing against boys. Uh, he was the best linebacker, he was the best running back, uh, and it turns out he's the best person because Eric has never thanked, yeah, give him a round of applause. Uh, he is an inspiration, has never once uh, said, woe is me, and makes each of us who get to know him uh, better because of that. So Eric, thank you for being here today. Um, to everyone who thinks that government can't accomplish anything, no need to thank us for the 40 degree temperature. We passed the bill yesterday <laughs> requiring that to happen. Um, and to each of you, Thank you for coming out today to open this 218th legislature and to begin the challenge of taking back the state of New Jersey for the middle class. I'd like to take this opportunity to congratulate Governor-elect Murphy and the Assembly's very own Lieutenant Governor-elect Sheila Oliver. Congratulations to both of them. Also like to congratulate the members of the State Senate and Senate President Steve Sweeney. I wish each of them great success and I look forward to working with them as we move New Jersey forward. I'd also like to acknowledge Speaker Vincent Prieto. Speaker Prieto. Speaker, you led this body with class and dignity, and I thank you for your graciousness throughout this transition period. Thank you very much, Speaker. I'd also like to acknowledge Majority Leader Lou Greenwald and Minority Leader John Bramnick, two gentlemen whose opinion I respect greatly, and both of whom I look forward to working with over the next two years. John, Lou. I'd also like to thank the people who have supported me for years uh, and have helped make today possible. To my late mom, who, more than anyone, is most responsible for making me who I am or ever will be. To the best team around, Gary, Kevin, Artie, Lori, Scott, Dan, Dan, Dave, Lou, and Julie, 
Thank you for your friendship and your hard work. To my, yeah, give them a round of applause. They work hard every day. <laughs> to my amazing extended family, all 150 of you are there out here, <laughs> and the best family anyone could ever hope to have. Craig, Vincent, and Nicholas, Kathy, Robin, and Melissa, and of course, my wife, Tish, who is nothing short of a force of nature. <laughs> Together, you are an amazing foundation that has allowed me to stand here today, and I love you all very, very much. Now, this esteemed body since 2010, representing the great people of the 19th Legislative District. There they are. I'll try to get you better seats next time. <laughs> but beyond that, I suspect that you don't know very much about me. That is, unless, of course, you read the political blogs, in which case you know that I am low-key, relatively unknown, and a backbencher. <laughs> so you can see how I got the job. And I'll never be underestimated. But who I really am uh, is a guy who grew up in South Amboy, a proud, yeah, a proud product of the public school system and the son of Jack, who passed away when I was four, and Claire Coughlin. It was a place where my sister Cindy and I were taught that if you were honest and you worked hard, you would succeed. That if you cared about your family and looked out for your neighbors, they would do the same. I grew up at a time when John F. Kennedy was the president. Our country's future was bright with idealism and dreams of what would be. It was a time when public service was called a higher calling. And, that our and while our nation's challenges were great, we believed we could fix them if we put our minds to it and work together. I still believe all of that is very true. But today, when I speak to people in my district, working class communities like Woodbridge and Sarahville, I'm saddened by how much faith people have lost in government. I'm taken aback by how many people have written us off as not being able or having the desire to help them in their daily anxieties. Too many people seem to believe that the system doesn't care about them. But I know that's not true. And I know that everyone here on this stage is here because we believe that we can make a difference. Each of us has something in our lives that has led us to run for office and to get involved. For me, it was election night 1968, Nixon versus Humphrey. As I recall, it was very late in the evening. I was watching the returns with my mom, and I asked her, who did we want to win? She explained her choice with an eloquence that was as understandable to her 10-year-old son then as it is profound to her 59-year-old son today. She said she chose her candidate because he cared about people like us. That simple statement, the basic notion of government helping people has been my inspiration ever since. I'm sure each of my 79 colleagues has an equally defining story. And that is why I know that each of us wants to make New Jersey a better place to live. And with that guiding principle, I come before you today to thank you, my colleagues, and offer congratulations to each of you. Congratulations on your victory, and thank you for your willingness to serve, take on the awesome responsibility of serving the people of this great state. It was Al Peroni, the former head of OLS, who at the end of my orientation, when I was first elected, brought home to me the enormity of the responsibilities that we have. He said, there are about nine million people in the state of New Jersey, 121 of them get to make 
the rules. And you are one of them. I think of those words today as I come before you to open this session of the legislature. The power bestowed upon us by our neighbors gives us an opportunity that most people never have. The power to bring about change and to tackle real problems. I'm not saying this is going to be easy. In fact, I'm telling you it's going to be very hard because the challenges New Jersey face are very real. But whether you live in Carteret or Carlstead, Patterson or Atlantic City, middle class residents and those aspiring to enter the middle class have the same concerns. New Jersey has gotten too expensive. College graduates worry that they can't find an affordable place to live even if they somehow find a job. Parents and seniors worry about being able to afford to stay here. Families worry about paying for college. Workers worry about a salary that can't pay the rent and what happens if they get sick or if they have to take a day off to care for a family member. Commuters worry about a mass transit system that can't reliably get them to work on time. Those challenges allow us to find our purpose. They allow us to define our legislative agenda in addressing the anxieties and the economic insecurities that simmer in the everyday lives of our constituents. Our work will speak for our priorities, and our work must focus on building a stronger system of opportunity and security for the middle class, while standing up for the least fortunate among us and encouraging great success. A quality public education, access to a good paying job, an affordable place to live, an equal wage for equal work, and a government that values their worries. This is what we should be focused on. Opportunity for the middle class begins with access to good education, and full funding of schools is a real property tax relief and an opportunity for middle class mobility. We must also recognize that college isn't a college education isn't necessary or appropriate for every student. In this state and in others, high-skilled jobs cannot be filled because employers can't find workers with the right training. We must focus on job training and workforce development, which offers a path to middle-class mobility. We must also look for ways to make our state more vibrant. Applying science and technology to emerging industries is a source of jobs and an economic development for our state. That is why I've created a new committee on science, innovation, and technology to enable New Jersey to take advantage of our location and our tremendous human capital. At its core, government must be able to do the basics. Few things are as basic to government as a dependable transportation system. Right now, workers cannot rely on our buses and trains to get them to and from work. Let's pledge ourselves and this body to do all we can to get the Gateway Tunnel built, to fix New Jersey Transit, and to get people to work on time. Let's also remember that while we tackle the big challenges, there are lots of little annoyances that seem to defy common sense and are maddening to our constituents. Too often, those are governmental actions that seem to have no purpose but to annoy people. Let's take a look at what annoying and pointless rules we can help eliminate. One more thing, something personal to me, I would like us to address, and that is hunger. In this wealthy state, too many people go to bed hungry. In this wealthy state, too many communities don't have access 
to a supermarket. And in And in this wealthy state, too many food banks that serve the least among us don't have enough support. We can and we will fix that. Every session of the legislature is important. And every session of the legislature offers us the opportunity to do right by our neighbors. But we are here at a unique time when our fellow citizens need to see that government can help, that government can be a positive force for good in their lives. Now, I'm not wise enough nor foolish enough to think that I have all the answers, but I am humble enough to know that it takes all of us to make the assembly work. I want your priorities and I want your opinions on the issues in front of us because I recognize that each of you is a fierce advocate for your district. All voices in our chamber matter, whether Republican or Democrat, North, South, or Central, I will listen and respect each. I do, however, reserve the right to disagree. <laughs> now. now, I will always look for collaboration with the Senate and with the governor. But inevitably, there will be times when the assembly must set its own course and act as an independent and equal branch of government. I will not be afraid to chart that path when it's necessary. My overarching priority is to make sure that we get the policy right. And I can only do that with the help of each of you. In deciding to go to the moon, President Kennedy told the nation, we choose to go to the moon, not because it is easy, but because it is hard. To my colleagues, let's do hard things, and let's do them together. Let's make the hallmark of the 218th Assembly that it was thorough and thoughtful, that it took on big challenges and wasn't afraid to be bold in its thinking or in the mountains it chose to scale. And when we do, we will honor the awesome responsibility and humbling trust that nine million New Jerseyans gave us when they chose us to be the ones who get to make the rules. Thank you for your trust and your confidence in allowing me to serve as speaker. Thank you all for coming. God bless you all and God bless the great state of New Jersey.